is flat. Ugh. Hey mamas, welcome back to my channel, and if you're new to my channel, welcome, welcome. My name is Zahara, and I am a wife, a mother, a serial entrepreneur, and on my channel, we talk about marriage, we talk about motherhood, we talk about mompreneurship, and we talk about biblical motivation, modesty, God, all of that good, wholesome fun. <laughs> So it is week two of our 52 week challenge. This is the second video. I am committed because it is six o'clock in the morning. I literally was not going to upload this video, but like I said, I really want to show consistency. I want to show it for you guys and I have a lot of stuff that I want to share with you and y'all will never get that information if I'm not consistent and if I don't push myself. So that's what I have been, that it ain't what I have been doing. That's what I did today. So we'll see how it continues so as you can tell by the title we're going to be talking about femininity this segues into like the modesty portion of my channel i think modesty is femininity and femininity is modesty um because modesty is not just clothing it's just the overall being so so today i'm going to be sharing with you lovely ladies the 10 ways that i have been becoming more feminine by no means am I any Dr. Michelle or anything like that. This is just my own personal journey and I just decided to share it with you. All of these things are still things that I deal with and I'm trying to overcome and I'm trying to battle. This is the journey to get in there, but I do have a list of things that I try to at least work on that I need to be more diligent in working on. But these are things that I know that I need to work on and things that I know that will help me become more feminine. So... That is why they are on this list. I'm not saying that I like live by these things religiously. I should, but I'm not there yet. So when you see people like Dr. Michelle, and there is another person, I cannot remember her name, but um, I'm sure if you watch Dr. Michelle, I'm probably sure you segue into this other woman. Um, when you see people like Dr. Michelle and those in that type of niche, it gets a little bit discouraging because she's literally perfect and you feel like you need to be there right at the very moment that you watch that video and that's just not realistic. So I'm here with you. Like I'm on the journey to femininity and like really trying to walk the feminine path, but it's hard to get there when you were not taught that. That's not how you were raised. That's not how you were brought up. And it is very difficult to try to get there, but I think that we can all get there one step at a time. And I'm just trying to contribute to your feminine walk with sharing with you what I do on my feminine walk. <laughs> so let's stop rambling and let's get into it. So the first thing on my list, and my list is in no like order of significance, it's this this is just the order that I'm giving it. The first one on my list is to smile more. Now, in our community, I'm a woman, but I'm a black woman. So in our black women community, this is something that black men and just men in general and other female counterparts have said that black women have a very hard time smiling at people. And it's true, unfortunately, that we, I don't know, we always got our mug on me, like, it's just crazy that, like, it's joke centered around this, and it's like, oh, big laughing stock, but it is true, it is very true, it is a very true stereotype that we feed into, because we be mugging, like, it's, it's funny, because we make jokes like, oh, oh, black women, you should smile more, and there's, like, so many, um, like, comedy skits about it, like, hey, well, sis, you too beautiful to not be smiling, and then the woman is like, oh, boy, boy, bye, like, we are really like that, so I think that smiling more will help me become more feminine, literally, like, <laughs> it's funny, because I have, like, a resting bee face, and my husband will literally ask me, 50 times a day like are you good you okay you good and it's because i'm not smiling i have just such a, a irritated looking face and it's just my normal face but i don't want to be like that i want to smile and i want i want him to know that i'm good and he never knows if i'm good because i'm literally always looking mad like 
no i hate it i know that he hates it i hate him asking me 500 times a day and i know he hates asking me 500 times a day and i'm like telling him like no i'm good and he's like okay well, you don't look good i'm like no i'm fine it's just my face and he's like well your face looks mad and then i get mad because i'm like how my face look mad but Look, you got to call a spade a spade. And I be a spade because I be looking angry. So I'm trying to just smile more, smile at the kids more, smile at my husband more, just smile at people in general more. I feel that it gives you, it already gives you a very feminine feel when you're already smiling because the stereotype is that black women don't smile, especially at black men. So I don't care who it is. I go above and beyond to smile at my black brothers because... They got enough going on to have another sister like mugging them at Walmart. So I try to make sure that I'm smiling. It's not something that I'm used to because I'm not a very smiley person and I don't know. So that is the first thing on my list is to smile more, show your teeth. It's beautiful. Smile. The second one is probably the hardest one for me on this list and that is to stop cursing. My husband hates my potty mouth. Sometimes I'm like, girl, relax. I cuss a lot. I am a, I'm a sailor. I am a southern girl and we have potty mouths. And it's not cute. It's so like, it's ugly. It's, it is very ugly. And... <laughs> my husband makes it very clear that he hates it and I'm like damn I have to stop so what I do this is a method that I did when I first started following Christ um um these rubber bands I took them off because it was gonna mess with my outfit but I put these rubber bands on my wrist and every single time that I say a curse word I pop myself the rubber band and I know some people um have have said this to me actually that oh why are you hurting yourself like you shouldn't be doing that that's self-harm but like Listen, you know how when you're little and there's like a, a candle or you're near the stove and you put your hand up there and you feel that it's hot, it sends ch triggers or alarms to your brain to let you know that's dangerous, that's hot. You probably shouldn't do that again. So now as adults, we have it in our brain that I'm not going to touch fire because it's it's hot. Except for some people that are weird, they, they touch fire, but I'm talking about us normals. We don't touch fire because we know that it is hot because we probably touched it as a, a, a baby or a child to send those signals to our brain to know that it's hot. So that is what this does for me. When I pop myself after I say a curse word, it sends like a little signal to my brain to let me know, okay, curse words equals this pain that you're feeling that you don't want to feel so maybe you shouldn't say curse words and i'm telling you it worked for me i was not cursing and then i stopped doing this because i was like okay i got it i stopped doing this and the potty mouth came right back so <laughs> i'm on this again my favorite rubber bands to use are um these came from like some asparagus and they are thick they thick and they hurt so um some people are good at just like quitting cold turkey. I'm not one of those people. I'm hard headed and I, I, I need a little bit of reinforcement. So that is my method to stop cursing. It's unattractive and most importantly, even if you don't feel like it's unattractive, a lot of people feel like it's unattractive. They don't feel like it's feminine. And for me, more importantly, my husband really hates it. So. Ugh, I gotta really stop doing that. Number three on the list is walking around the house in heels. Now, I do not do this all the time because I be, I be ripping and running, but I do like to try to do it just to work on my posture. And I really want to get into wearing heels every day. I want to be that mom. When we're young, we all have who we look up to. And we have like a role model and like, oh, I want to be like this person when I grow up. My great aunt, which is my favorite aunt, um, if you follow our family vlog channel, you have seen her in um, one of our vlogs she was my favorite aunt growing up and I just thought that she was so I just thought she was just the sugar honey iced tea like 
just everything about her her wardrobe like her big glasses her purses like and she would always wear heels like she was a heel girl she would wear heels she'd be click clacking like in the grocery store and i'm like yes i want to be like that when i grow up she has so many shoes she's given me a lot of shoes too um she's given me a lot of clothes like a lot of purses i love we all have that one auntie she's my bougie auntie i'm gonna have to have her send me a video of her closet room like I used to live with her in my old bedroom. She turned into like a closet. So she has, it's it's amazing. She has like these big shelves with her shoes and like her purses. And I'm gonna have her send me a video. Hopefully she can send it by the time this video needs to be uploaded. Um, but we will see, we'll see. Cause I really want y'all to see it. This is who I wanted to emulate. And she always wore heels. Her posture was really nice. Like she just, she just looked so confident. And that's what I want to have. Good confidence can go a long way. So I want to start wearing my heels around the house. I'm doing that to work on my posture and to kind of like get my feet trained to be able to walk in heels for a long periodically time. So, so my next tip is my five S's of speech that is a tongue twister i'm not going to get too in detail on it on this video because i do want to make a separate video like really going into detail about each and every s on this list <laughs> um but i did make an instagram post about it and i will link that down below if you haven't seen it and basically my five s's of speech are just like a checklist or like rules that i made for me regarding my speech so the five s's of speech are speed simplify second silenter and swearing and just kind of like a general about what it actually is it's just like a rule of thumb that i like to try to use when i am in the midst of my speech to make me a little bit more feminine like how fast i speak or what i say definitely swearing is on there because i'm trying to eliminate that from my vocabulary using a softer tone but like i said we'll get more into detail about that in a another video number five is working on my posture so going along with wearing the heels to work on my posture i'm actively like sitting up straight to work on my posture i normally sit like this like uh -oh, like this ew like like the difference that that makes it's crazy so to do this i just basically sit still in a chair for like five to ten minutes just straight up not really doing anything and that's just what i do and it, it, it's helping a little bit because now i'm more conscious is that the word now i'm more conscious yeah i'm more conscious i feel like i'm messing that up now i be knowing now i be knowing when i'm like hunched like this and in my brain it's like girl sit up so that has actually worked that's something that i could say like checked off the list that i'm doing and it's crazy because there was this one time i'm sitting at the dinner table with my husband my husband is just he all up and through this video but what i do things to try to please him so um i didn't lost my train of thought thinking about my husband <laughs> so yeah we were sitting at the dinner table and i was hunchback per usual and then i just like sat up straight and i kind of like readjusted and I, I just kept doing whatever i was doing and i look over at my husband and he's just like staring at me and i'm like what he's like you look so beautiful and literally this was at the end of the day he had been seeing me all day so i'm like thanks he's like yo you sitting up straight look so beautiful and i'm like really so that's when i kind of implemented the like sitting up like really working on my posture because he was checking for me and i'm like oh word that's what you like you like a straight back well, okay i got your straight back so um i am i'm doing it and it's working for me and it helps my back because i have a bad back my back be hurt and i'm only 26 year old and I feel like I said that word. I'm only 26 years old and I feel like my back is 48. So sitting up straight really does help my back. There are times where I realize that I've been sitting like this for a long time. And when I do sit up straight, my back feels horrible. So this has really been helping me with that. So yeah. The next one is also really, really high on the list is self-care routine. I want to 
get into like this ritualistic self-care regimen. Okay, not even a routine, a regimen. I want to have a Jackie Ina level skincare routine. Like, my skin is very sensitive. So when I'm not taking care of my skin, it shows. If I'm stressed, it shows through my skin. And I also have blotchy, like, skin. I get, like, these dark and light spots on my skin when I'm not taking care of it and it's like that right now which is why I put on makeup for this video which I haven't even been ma wearing makeup in months and I put on some for this video because my skin child when I turn on the spring light no it's like my hyperpigmentation is like ugh, and it's just it's just a lot <laughs> so I need to really get into the habit of making sure that my skin looks nice because that is so hygiene itself is very feminine if you have like nice skin and you just smell good not just skincare but just hygiene care in general but i already smell good i already make sure i'm showering it's my skin like my face my facial skin that i neglect i literally will just wash it put on some moisturizer put on an oil and just go but i really want to get into my serums and my scrubs and my chemical exfoliants and all that good stuff i really want to get into it because i think that when you have just like a fresh face and there's no blemishes on your face and everything is smooth and everything is just nice and then you smell good and everything it just comes together and you look feminine you just look good, you feel good, and then you will radiate good things. So having nice skin, and if you don't have clear skin, like I don't deal with like cystic acne or hormonal acne um, or anything too severe like that. My things are like very minor, but if you deal with something severe um, where you can't just easily get rid of it, I'm not saying that you can't be feminine. What I am saying is that someone who takes care of their skin and you could tell, like, okay, even though she has acne, I can see that she's glowing through the acne, that she takes care of her skin, you'll still look more feminine. So I don't want to, I don't want nobody coming for me and be like, okay, well, I have cystic acne, so can I not be feminine? Yeah, you can. Just take care of your skin, so. Number seven is also super important for me, and that is to study more and read more. And first and foremost, studying and reading my Bible more. When you have a good relationship with God, you're automatically more feminine because the Bible tells you what type of woman that you're supposed to be. I studied the same things because I want to really like drill into my brain exactly who I want to be. And that is found in the scriptures. So studying more of the Bible will help me become more feminine because it's literally giving me the blueprint of what I need to be. Proverbs 31 and a Titus 2 type of woman is what I want to be, so that's what I study, and I just need to study it more. Um, just reading the Bible in general more will help me get closer to God, in turn, turning me into a more feminine, godly woman, which is overall what I want. I just think femininity and godliness are the perfect match of what I'm trying to um, accomplish so I need to all the tips that I'm doing will be nothing if I don't put God in the forefront of that so I need to put God in the forefront of it also just like praying more fasting more I remember when um, right before our daughter passed away I was praying fasting studying literally more than I have ever done in my entire life I was fasting once a week I was praying multiple times a day I was reading my Bible every single day and it's because you know, that was my plead and my cry to the Most High to save my baby. Um, but he had other plans, which either way, I'm thankful. But I realized a change in my overall spirit. Even my husband, yes, I'm talking about my husband again. Even my husband said that he realized a change just because I was putting God at the forefront of everything. And it showed through like my behavior and my femininity and just the way that I was talking, just more softer. I'm very snappy. And during the times where I was like on 100, it, it wasn't so snappy. I was more cautious to what I was saying. I thought about things before I spoke. And it's because I was putting God in the forefront. So um, not to say that I don't put God in the forefront now. It's just the way that I know that I should be doing it. I don't. I'm very kind of like 
slacked in those areas like I don't pray as much as I was before I don't study as much as I was before um I don't fast as I was um I don't fast as much as I was before so that's something that I want to get back into and also fasting just helps reset your body so if you're doing that every single week you're giving your body a chance to just reset from the week that you just put on it you're just resetting your body um so I really want to get back into that and slowly I am and I'm creating better like studying habits, better praying habits, better fasting habits. So I'm really happy with myself for the accomplishments and the progress that I made, but I know where I want to hit and I'm not there yet. So I'm just going to keep trying. I'm going to keep pushing and keep striving to get to the point that I want to get. So the next tip for you mamas is to get dressed every single day. No matter if you're sitting in the house, if you're going, if you're just going to go check the mail, if you just run into Walmart, get dressed every single day. I had a bad habit of like, oh, I'm going to save this outfit. I'm going to save this outfit. Save it for what? Save it for who? Like, my husband's sitting here looking at me. I'm sitting here looking at me. My kids are sitting I can get dressed up for my family. And that's what I do. So even if it's just wearing, like, a t-shirt and a, like, cute little shirt, just throwing on a little dress, just getting out of your night clothes makes such a difference, like, in how you feel about yourself. And when you feel good about yourself, like I said, you will radiate good positive like energy good vibes so if you're laying around in your crusty pjs for days and days and days you're gonna feel crusty for days and days and days and that's not feminine crust and femininity don't mix so we want to make sure that we're just getting dressed and that's something that i noticed like changes the way that i feel i feel more productive i want to get things done i feel pretty i feel feminine i feel like I look cute and it makes me it just makes me overall happy and I think that if you're getting dressed up every single day I know that I know that COVID I know that quarantine I know that quarantine did us bad and we were so used to just being in bed and like not being able to go anywhere so we got into the habit of just like bumming it but we're not quarantining anymore if you if you're not quarantining then we're not quarantining like everybody's not quarantining so uh oh girl I got a lash in my eye oh my god start getting dressed we're not quarantining anymore we are able to go outside and even if you're not going outside just get dressed up for you you have to look at you you have to smell you so do yourself a favor wash your behind put on some fresh underwear put on a fresh outfit and just feel good feel confident and feel more feminine and touch with your girlier side the next tip that I have is keep your spaces clean. This is something that I struggle with because I am a hoarder and if you know me and if you've been following me and if you know me then you know I live in a studio apartment okay with me my husband and three children we have a lot of stuff there's a lot of stuff packed in a small space and it drives me absolutely crazy and it gets crazy because we have children they have toys they're running around i have a business there's dishes there's toys there's clothes there's so much stuff and it drives me crazy so this one is really big for me because because our space is already so small and everything is already so like stacked on top of each other when it's out of order it literally drives me crazy and i'm unproductive i don't i'm not in a good mood i have a bad attitude i'm snapping i'm cussing and it's just like the list that i have it's falling apart because that's one thing because it's just so I suggest keeping like your space is clean. If you have a clean space, you have a clean brain. And that is a true testament because when the house is in disarray, my brain is in disarray. And I literally, like I said, I have a bad attitude. I can't get anything done. I'm yelling at the kids. Like I got an attitude with my husband and I'm just like, oh my God, it's too much going on because my brain is so like overwhelmed, too overstimulated by everything that's just around me. So so like because of one thing it could just trigger and like send a domino effect like crashing down my list and my things that i'm trying to live by so just it's i think it's very important that we just keep our spaces clean and organized just not for femininity just for mental stability in general you know and the last tip that i have super important is just to love your own self love your own soul love yourself care for yourself if you do not love yourself everything on this list is for nothing you will be literally doing it in vain because you're who are you doing it for 
you the person you don't even love like no so it's super important to just love yourself and this is something that i'm still working on and i know people look at me like people literally tell me like oh so horror like you're so strong and you're just so this and you're so that and you just didn't and sometimes when y'all saying that i'm reading the messages like me like uh, sometimes I don't feel it like I I have I have insecurities that I battle I have low self-esteem at times I have like a little bit of depression at times and I just be sad at times and I'm just like yo I ain't crap and I you know I have these things but you just have to love yourself through your struggle and then you're gonna get to this place where you're just like this amazing flower and literally that's what my name means it means a blooming flower because that's what i am right now i'm a little bud i started out as a bud and slowly and slowly i'm blooming and eventually i'm gonna be like a, a radiant beautiful flower i'm not there yet i'm still in my blooming phase and even sometimes like i reverse bloom and i turn back into a bud and then i have to like bloom again and even when i feel like i'm about to be a flower like oh i start reversing again we all have like our own like insecurities that we overcome like i will share one with you guys right now my teeth are a huge insecurity for me that's why i i don't really smile because i i do i do smile i'm a very smiley person but i'm very reserved about it because my teeth are such a huge insecurity for me i used to get bullied about it teased about it and picked on and all these things and kids are very mean and my teeth are just a very insecure i'm pretty sure y'all have seen it okay i have like a one little crooked tooth and i could just go get braces but i'm trying to love myself with the body that god gave me i could just go and get braces but if God wanted me to have straight teeth, I would have had them. This is my little vampire tooth. And it just makes me me. And it gives me character. And it gives me pizzazz. And it's just here. And it's not going anywhere. And it's just, it's here. So I need to learn to just love it. Which I do. I've, I've gotten, I've overcome it. But there are certain times where that little girl in me, the little fifth grader in me, she comes back and she doesn't want to smile in her pictures or she'll literally delete a video because I think that my like vampire tooth, that's what I call it, my vampire tooth is like showing too much and I just like, oh, I'm like, oh my God, I'm just going to delete this because the internet is a dangerous place to be okay if you don't have a certain level of self-esteem this place will rip you to shreds um so i would lit i'll literally delete videos some youtube videos that i record i will literally not upload the video because i'm like no my vampire tooth is showing too much and i just I'm, i don't want to but and there's other times where i'm like you know what this is me like if somebody's gonna look at my picture or look at my video and say oh I'm not gonna like I'm not gonna rock with her because she has this weird tooth and you don't need to rock with me okay but I rock with me and over time I'm learning to just love myself more and more and more and I think that that will help me truly like cultivate this feminine nature that I'm trying to do if I love myself then apply all of these things like everything will fall into place love myself put the most high first everything else will just like start to fall into place so so that is the end of this video. This was a pretty long one, but I hope you guys stayed until the end. If you did stay in to the end, I want you to comment vampire tooth <laughs> in the comments. To let me know that you stayed to the end and you stayed here with me and you thugged it out, baby. <laughs> So yeah, if you like this video, make sure to give it a big thumbs up and um, make sure to always check the description box because I put things in there that I would like for you to read. I sit there and I type it up and I'm like, ooh, they gonna love this. And then y'all don't even read it. <laughs> make sure to subscribe to my channel, to follow me on my 52 week journey, to post content every single week. My post days will be on Monday if you haven't caught the pattern. It is yo Melody Mama Monday. So <laughs> mark your calendar, baby. You don't have to mark your calendar. But make sure you turn on the bell notification that you can get notified when I post i feel like that sentence was wrong but we're just gonna keep going i hope y'all learned something or i hope one of these tips helped you i hope this helped somebody somewhere out there even if it's just one person i really appreciate you guys for watching and i will see you in my next video bye